Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Ty here. Today I want to show you my 1999 Isuzu Z-Across. These things are pretty sweet. If you don't know what they are, you should, and I'm going to show you what they're all about today. But first, we're going to go head up the little canyon a little bit, get a little bit different scenery. Also have new, some new gear to try out, and we don't have much light, so let's get to it. take you a little further up the trail but it's blocked off for for winter um, we'll go up there another time I found a little spot right here I'll give you a little walk around so let me tell you a little bit about the Via Cross so like I said it's a 1999 they only made these from 99 to 2001 and there's only about 4200 or so of these ever produced so they're fairly rare I think about 1,800 of them or so. I'll correct my numbers. I'll look it up here in the bottom. But uh, are Japan only models, so there really is not that many in the U.S. or for the U.S. market. And some of those did get shipped overseas. I know there's quite a following in in Russia for them. I've seen a lot of pages for Via Crosses specifically. Um, but what's really cool about it is, so it's all-time four-wheel drive. It has a four low range transfer case and it doesn't have lockers but it has what they call a torque on demand system basically there's 12 sensors that modulate the wheel speed um, and it basically acts as a faux locker so if a wheel starts slipping the computer tells it to give traction to the other wheel so it works pretty good uh, I've taken it down to Moab I, ha I hammered it hard down there. I took it on some trails it shouldn't have been on and, and it, it was impressive. Now, I did mess up my steering the last time I was in Moab, so the steering needs some work. And maybe I was a little hard on the tranny, but uh, you know, it's still holding together. It def definitely needs some love though. Um, but I, did, I took it down Cane Creek and that was just a little bit much for it on Hamburger Hill. But uh, it did make it out. Um, I got nicknamed the Via Boss while I was down there because it was just so impressive. Everyone that saw it on the trail was just like wondering either what it was or 
or they were super excited to see it on the trail because they knew what it was. So, I mean, look at this thing. It's cool. So, yeah, let's take a little walk around. It's really got this space age kind of feel to it. In fact, I had taken it, I used to dr daily drive this, and I started driving it to work, and someone asked me if I got a brand new car. They thought it was brand new, and it's 20 years old. So definitely since then, um, I've had it a few years, and it is fading on the only new paint job eventually, or maybe a wrap. Um, but it has this really cool front end grill. Kind of has these teeth, these titanium looking teeth, and these unique headlights really good clearance I, so it is independent on the front and it has a solid axle in the rear um, I've modified mine a, a little bit it has torsion bar suspension so I've cranked up the front um, and then I do have taller springs on the rear and I'm running these are the BF Goodrich uh, KM3s uh, 33 by 1250s so Good size tire. I've seen people go higher, you know, up to like 35s on these. Um, so it can do it. I didn't want to go really bigger than this, so this was good for me. I did have to trim out the fender here a little bit for the clearance, and I uh, had to take some out over here really to, to get to clear. But other than that, um, they fit pretty good. Let's take a walk around here. Interior is really cool. For the year oh and i'll mention too i'm i'm rocking the xd series the kmc wheels um they are not true bead locks they just kind of have that faux bead lock ring i was gonna my plan was to put on some of those interior i think those coyote uh bead locks that go inside to keep it dot approved because i did want to still drive this on the street um this has a 3.5 liter V6. Pretty torquey little motor for the time. Um, so the interior is all matching red. It's got uh, Recaro race seats from the factory, which is pretty sweet. Um, very unique dash. And I'll show you the torque on demand system here so let's see if you'll be able to see this so when I turn it on you'll see the torque on demand over here on the left um, the rears you'll see solid lights on the wheels and then there's these three dots for each wheel on the front now I'm shifted into low range right now um, if I shifted into high range let me turn it on so If I shift into high range, you'll notice those top lights go off. I'll turn off the air. Um, and so, like I said, it's all time four wheel drive, but it's in this auto mode. You can kind of see that. Um, and then, as if it slips in the rain or whatever, it will engage more traction up front. But if I put it into four low, it'll instantly kick. All those lights on. There we go. Um, and engage the the low range four wheel drive. Um, and the back space. Uh, let's take a look back here. So the one challenge is it is a little tight to get back here. So probably only kids can easily get back here. Although I'm fairly small, so I can get back here. Um, so if I pop back here, little tricky to get back here, but once you do, there's actually quite a bit of space. I mean, I'm sitting here, I still have leg room, I don't know if you can see this at all, but um, it's pretty good. So it is only, has four seat belts. Now I have had my kids back here, and I did rig up a third seat belt here to mount a car seat it was a little tight but it did work on the trails and I had it bolted down to the back here um, but let's go around back and I'll show you what that looks like now I will show you one kind of goofy thing is um, 
the key so you do have to insert the key so there's no way to pop the tailgate from the from inside so you do have to use the key and at first glance you're kind of wondering how do I open it um, so you actually there is kind of a handle right here so I'll just kind of grab that handle as I turn um, and you can open it up yeah you see the bulge in that back tailgate it does have a spare uh, you pop this cover off but it's like a little donut um, a lot of people in the via cross community refer to it as the yellow wagon wheel because it is it looks well it's painted yellow and it's a tiny little wheel I have had to bust that wagon wheel out before um, is before I had the new tires on it I'll uh, I'll see if I can find a clip up here and overlay it here so you can see what I'm talking about but I had the kids with me doing a four-wheel trip right when I first got it and pop the pop the bead off the rim and had to bust that out in the rain so that was not very fun but um, I shortly after that got the new tires um, so they're not a ton of trunk space but decent amount I mean probably about the same as a TJ uh, I keep this road box back here and then I had since I had more gear that I brought up with me here I just lean the seat forward and it does kind of tumble so um, you can push the lever there put those down kind of makes it flat just kind of nice and then um, there's a little lever you pull and then it just uh, rolls, forward, rolls forward there and then there is a strap um, on the front of that that it will lock it um, to the floor so that it doesn't fall back on you so I'm gonna leave that up since I'm gonna be putting stuff back in here so that's my via cross it's really been a fun ride um, like I said I used to daily it but since I kind of messed up in Moab with steering I haven't driven it much I did throw a fresh battery on in it um, so that we can come out here today so um, a lot of plans for this in the future um, maybe I'll shoot some some b-roll uh, or include some b-roll uh, wheeling in Moab so you kind of get a sense of uh, some obstacles it was doing there um, and I did have a Yakima rack on the top that I was borrowing um, that had my spare tire because I have a full-size spare wheel and spare and I had that on the roof and um, that worked really good I I need to get a roof rack so um, I've been drawing one out I kind of want to build one the way I want it so we'll see but it also would be cool to put um, like a roof tent on here too um, to do a little mini camper so I don't know we'll figure it out um, you know I have a lot of projects going so I don't know what what one I should be working on first uh, the Jeep is in progress um, I'll bring in, be bringing you more status updates on that um, Swall Dog over at Low Fabrication has it right now at his place, uh, so he's going to get working on it. I got to gather a few parts up for that. Um, meanwhile, I do have his buggy in my garage, so we had a place to store it. So I'll probably give you guys a walk around on that soon, so you can check out what what his is, and then um, also I'll put a link in the description, but to Swall Dog's channel, and you can go check him out and follow any progress he's making on there. Um, well, I do have some other gear here I want to want to try out. I've got the BioLite uh, fireplace that I just picked up, and I also got the BioLite stove. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna chop some wood. I'm gonna see if I can get this going and see if it's really as cool as the video was. It, it sold me on it, so we're gonna check it out. But basically, um, it has this battery pack on the side here and you can use it to charge your devices and whatnot but it also has a fan and it supposedly blows the air through the bottom and creates a smokeless fire in a 360 thing so uh, I'm gonna cut some wood and let's see if it works
get started. Well, that's getting going. I'm going to take out the BioLite stove and check it out. Well, the BioLite stove is pretty cool because it also has a battery, but its battery has this thermal rod that it actually is able to charge the battery pack. Whereas this battery pack, you have to charge it. It doesn't charge itself. It just provides a fan, but it's a bigger battery. This one I will actually charge. And so the idea is keep this in your, in your car or whatever. And with a few sticks, you could charge your cell phone. So we're going to try it out. So this just goes into a hole here. And see that these feet flip out. Um, when this foot on the side of the battery flips out, it actually holds the battery in place, which is kind of cool. And it also has some accessories that I picked up too. I, I'm not going to use them today, but um, it has this little grill set up so you can pull these legs out. Pull this top off. It's a grill. And then you can place this on here and have a little grill, which is pretty cool. And then you can feed in the sticks from the top here. So, but like I said, I'll try that out another day. Um, it's also got, you can get the kit, and I'll, I'll link these in the description below as well if you're interested in, in checking this out. And it's not tested for me, this is my first experience with it, so. But it does come with this pot, um, and inside the pot has a few things. So it's got, you can fill this up for your coffee or hot chocolate or whatever. Um, hot water, you could boil it in that, and then it has a nice little spout. And inside the lid, it comes with a little, little, it's kind of like a little mess kit. Um, so it has a bowl there, you can use that as a bowl. Um, it also, it does come with some fire starter that they include. Um, and it actually has this light, which is kind of cool. So this light, USBs into the battery. And and with the I believe it's tapping. Let me turn this on. And then you just tap the light. Just tap it, it turns on. So you can have a little cook lamp just right there, or you can unplug that and, and charge your phone. And then it's got this little device that has got a little strainer in here. That I guess you could use it's like a French press. Um, you twist this in. And pull that out. So pull that in here and then you could use this as your pot. Which is pretty cool. You know what, for this one, I think what we should do is I think we should just try to find some sticks. So I'm gonna go see if I can find some dry sticks as if I didn't have any wood with me. And we'll see if we can get this going. Kick this thing on. Get a little air flowing. And part of my EDC is this atomic lighter, as seen on TV, bad boy. Um, and my wife picked me up this. She thought it was cool. I was like, what is this? This is dumb. But it's actually freaking cool. It does have an on off switch and a battery, and then it's just. It's kind of electronic, I don't know if you see that. Um, pretty handy because if you have something like this that can charge, and you have something like this, as long as you have enough battery to get the fire started, um, you could charge your lighter with the bio, with the bio light, um, which is amazing. Uh, if you have, like I do carry another lighter somewhere in here, um, and it's a butane one, in fact it's right here. Um, 
But if I don't, if I run out of, and it's nice because it's a windproof lighter. And I don't know where I got this one. If I can find it, I'll link it below. But I mean, it's nice because it has a nice solid flame. It's windproof, uh, waterproof case. But if you run out of fuel, you know, that's it. So um, this is nice if you have ways to charge. Like if I'm here with my battery pack here or the BioLite stove, I could charge this up. So. All right, they're raging now. The fans definitely help. The fans blowing from underneath, it really take, it really adds that oxygen to, to the fires, takes the smoke out. Um, you know, this one clearly has logs. It's supposed to fit four logs. Uh, I've got three in there right now. Definitely more space for a fourth one. Just a standard bundle you might get in a, in a gas station. Um, and then this one just runs off sticks, so I've got this little supply of sticks I'm just putting in here. Um, I'll show you on the other side. So, so this had a little bit of battery before, but now it does have, so it basically has three indicator lights, and I'm going to show you that. So it's got these three bars. This is the battery charge level. You can see that it is going up and down, which means it's actively charging. Um, over here on the left is the, and it's kind of, the light is kind of hard to see, but you can see the two dots here. That means that the fire is actively adding thermal charging properties to the battery. And then the middle one's the fan. And so the button will change the fan level. You can go up and up, up and down on that. Um, the USB port is right here where I had that light. And I'm going to try plugging in the phone and see how that goes. Now clearly it had a bit of battery in here um, already so of course it's going to be charging my phone. I do have it plugged in. Um, but it is actively charging the battery and my phone at the same time with the sticks. So this is fantastic. I mean the fact that just with this portable little package, a few sticks that you find on the ground, you do have to kind of feed this as you go. Um, I've got this on a low fan setting. Uh, you can kick this up you'll start seeing it I mean instantly starts creating more fire when you add the oxygen um, so you do have to keep this going a little bit it would be more of a pain to deal with this one I think um, if you're actually trying to cook on it with that grill so I think that's more of kind of like emergency thing I think for what it is to be able to just I mean like I said my plan with this one is to keep it in my car always have a way that I can create a fire and charge batteries um, most of the time I'm gonna have battery packs I'll be prepared you know I'll have and maybe I'll have this one if I'm camping and that's definitely gonna have more capacity but the fact of just having this small package in your car you know whether or not I carry around the pitcher here and uh, the mess kit and the grill you know I don't know that's more bulky but this very small package charge battery with sticks I mean come on this is freaking cool again Links in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. So far, I'm impressed with this. But like I said, I don't know that I'm going to actively use it as a cooking device. Um, I also use a jet boil stove, and that works really well. Use the ISO butane um, canisters, and which lasts a decent while. Um, and then, I'll, of course, there is a grill attachment for this. I didn't, didn't bring it. You can put it on top. So... If you do want to have a wood fire um, with the fan, to create, I mean, there is smoke. There's still smoke. It's not totally smokeless, right? But it definitely burns more of the wood more efficiently, so that's cool. Um, maybe what we can do is give you a little walk around. What's cool about this one, too, so this has this mesh. The idea is that you can see the fire from all different angles. So if you have this at your campsite with a bunch of friends, you know, from every angle, you're seeing the fire through this kind of mesh. Again, here's a, here's a look at the, closer look at the battery pack. And you've got the fan speeds here. You've got the charge of your battery here. And then a USB port there. It looks like a 
the mini USB port there. So, got a couple charging options. Um, this thing is sweet. I mean, it's not too loud, it's bearable. Um, that is really freaking cool. Okay. So, looks like that one's going again. These, are, these things are cool. Um, definitely, like I said, you got to keep feeding this thing or it dies out pretty quick, especially if you have the fan kicked up like I do. But it's getting a lot of good, you know, if you have any coals in there, as soon as you add the sticks and the fans on, it just kicks the fire, it just stokes the fire right back up, which is nice. So you just kind of drop these sticks in here. Um, the charge is coming up. The, it's getting, it has about 50% um, thermal power. I don't know, it gets what you call it, but, uh, and the battery is about 50% as well. So I'm gonna let that run for a minute. Um, I told you I had some cool gear today. Uh, what else I'm gonna show you is this chair I'm sitting on. You might have saw me put it up at first. Um, this chair is the Click um, C L I Q. I'll link in the description. And really pretty, a beefy chair. Now I had a A light chair. There was a similar kind of low, low chair. It didn't have this. It had basically set it even a little bit lower. Awesome backpacking one, super light, but. Um, they discontinued them, and I, I had one for my wife as well, and I spilt battery acid on it. So I destroyed her chair. I owed her a new one. I wanted something similar to those chairs, um, but it was easier set up. The problem with those is they had a pole system, and it just took a little bit of time. I want something that kind of popped up quick, but still had that low profile, easy to carry around with you in your car setup. Um, these are definitely not light. It's not something you'd backpack with. They're, they're pretty beefy. Um, you can see pretty good steel here and it's got this mechanism in the center and what you do is you can collapse these poles just with these buttons you depress after those are collapsed you push this big button down on the bottom of the chair and it releases that mechanism and then you kind of just you know, put the material inside the middle there. Oh, looks like I didn't press this one all the way. And then it has a strap. And you can just wrap the strap around and Velcros to it. Really cool. Um, it also has a bag. Let me grab that. They sell multiple bags. Oh, I got the two place bag. So. I have two back, two of them in here. So you can see here, fits two. They have one that like they have a four and a six. Um, and I'll put I'll put links to that stuff below. Um, I probably should have got the four, but you know I almost rather get two twos. Um, just if I got some more chairs for the family, um, just because if I want to throw one in my my car, it may just be me. I may just want to grab two. And then, you know, you can disperse the weight and have when your kids carry the other one or something like that. So, um, I don't know if I'd get the four or six, I guess, um, bag. But it does make it easy to carry that many chairs at once, which is cool. So, I'm going to pull this one out again, and I'll show you how it sets up. So, you just release the Velcro strap. It just kind of pops out. It clips into place there. And all you do that at that point is you just pull the... Pull the bars up, click them into place, and easy as that. Freaking cool. Um, I'm really stoked on these chairs, and I'll be using these a lot. While I'm sitting by, I buy a light fireplace. So, what else? I think, I think now it's probably time to, to maybe, maybe I should make some hot, hot chocolate. That sounds kind of good right now. Heck, maybe we'll even try to make it on this. How about that? I'm gonna have to go gather up some more sticks.
Now, I don't really know how this works, but I assume just by kind of looking at how, how it's set up is I'm going to need to close this lid, which will then send the heat to the rest of this grill here. While it's kind of going there, I'm going to grab some water, fill this up. on here so that keep in the heat so what I'm finding with this is if you get a little bit thicker sticks they'll last longer obviously a little dense dense and dry as much as you can find um, you won't have to replace it but like I said you gotta constantly keep feeding this thing so it does take quite some time um, but it works and it's gonna be a great addition to the vehicle bug out kit and the fact that it can charge your batteries too i mean this is cool um wow this is a little bit intense if you put too many sticks in if you shove too many in there you may have a kind of a big flame up like i like i just experienced so it's just a lot it's a lot to manage but like i said it's in emergency, it's going to be totally doable. It's something I'm going to be taking around with me. The fact that I can charge a battery with freaking sticks um, is amazing. And But it is taking quite a while to heat up this water. As soon as it's about ready, I'm going to enjoy some hot chocolate. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today. You've seen the Via Cross, you've seen some of my gear. Again, I'll put as many links as in the description as I can below. I didn't mention this. Um, I got my hat. And uh, and the Octane Motorworks shirt. Um, these are samples. I want to make sure they're good enough quality for the rest of you. So store will be online soon. And if you want to pick up a hat or a shirt to uh, support the channel, definitely do that uh, help me out a lot to keep this content going and uh, you know I hope you guys don't forget to fuel your passions and get out there get out there on the trail get out there just outside whatever fuels you get out there and do it now because there's no other, no better time hope to see you next time later guys